you have ongoing elevated liver enzymes and wondering what else you can test for to figure out why these are elevated. My name is Dr. Taranella. In this video, we're going to look at and break down some of the further testing for elevated liver enzymes. We'll look at things like viral hepatitis, fatty liver, and more. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormones, and trying to expand your health awareness and get a deeper understanding of what's going on inside your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, Let's look at further testing for elevated liver enzymes. So in this video, we're going to look at further testing for elevated liver enzymes. So anytime there's consistently elevated liver enzymes, further testing should be done. And by consistently, we mean that several tests have been done. And this has been ongoing for several weeks, if not months. Also, it is assumed when doing further testing for elevated liver enzymes that the tests are done because you don't really know why the liver enzymes are high to begin with. For instance, you're not drinking alcohol on a regular basis, you're not taking Tylenol on a regular basis, and you're not consuming medications that are known to cause your liver enzymes to be elevated. Just to be clear, I mean, consuming Tylenol every single day, alcohol regularly, every day, every other day, consistently and at least close enough to the test to expect that that could affect it. So it's got to be within a few days of the test, maybe even up to four days, depending on the amount of alcohol or acetaminophen that's consumed. Now, assuming that you already ruled out that those things are not causing the problem for your elevated liver enzymes, what then? So in this scenario, there's a couple things right off the bat that you want to rule out that are fairly straightforward to test for. One is exercise. The other is viral hepatitis. And the last is NASH, also known as fatty liver or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So if you don't really exercise, we know that that's probably not an issue. However, there are some finer details that you might want to look at depending on maybe you went for a hike that weekend close to your test or something along those lines. There's some finer details that you might want to look at in another video that I did, which was titled, Can Exercise Affect Liver Enzyme Tests? So the viral hepatitis tests are fairly black and white. It's just a blood test that you do. There's three different types of viral hepatitis, A, B, and C. Hepatitis A is fairly short-lived and usually accompanied by some digestive symptoms like diarrhea, even vomiting and nausea. So because that's short-lived, you probably don't need to be tested for that one unless you're in an area where that is common. It's not that common in the U.S., but if you are having those GI symptoms, this could be the cause. For hepatitis B and C, a simple antibody test, blood test is done. And if that test is negative, then you should move on and have the testing for non-alcoholic hepatitis. Now, these all can be done at the same time. You can do the, the testing for NASH or fatty liver at the same time that you're getting the blood test done. But if your antibody test for viral hepatitis B or C is positive, we're going to need to follow up and do some other tests to make sure that it actually is present. Now, I'm not going to go into that in this video, but just because you have positive antibodies does not mean that you have viral hepatitis. Okay, so how do you test for fatty liver? Well, basically, it's an ultrasound of the liver that's looking for fatty infiltrates in the liver tissue itself. If you have elevated triglycerides or blood sugar, it's likely that you also have fatty liver if your liver enzymes are high as well. Some people can still have fatty liver even if their liver enzymes are not that high or even in the case of their normal. So the ultrasound will confirm this, how much fatty liver is there, if it's there at all. If it's able to be detected, it will show up on the ultrasound. So if there's nothing going on exercise-wise, you don't have anything going on with your liver in terms of fatty liver or NASH, and then you also have ruled out viral hepatitis, it may be a good idea to get a visit with a GI specialist so that they can do an internal check for anything obvious. Usually they'll do a colonoscopy and make sure there's no obvious signs there that could be impacting your liver. The most worrisome, of course, would be some kind of GI cancer. Now, the testing that they do is very important, but they're not really looking at microscopic things. Sometimes there'll be biopsies done and they will look a little closer at things, but they're typically not looking for bacterial or fungal things that can be part of the problem. This leads to the next thing you want to think about in general, which is overall toxic exposure. Any kind of chemicals that you're exposed to consistently, whether they're at work, heavy metals, maybe from a well water or anything, 
chemically related, could be something in your house. Maybe even if you have mold in your house, that would be a major thing. These things can definitely cause elevated liver enzymes. There are lots of specialty lab tests that you can do to look deeper at some of these problems for chemical exposures, things coming from your digestive tract, whether it's bacteria or yeast, heavy mouth testing, lots of other testing that can be done to identify where the problem is coming from in terms of elevations in liver enzymes. The first step though is to test for the more serious things. They are a little more obvious. And once those are ruled out, then you can move on to test for some of these more nuanced things. Okay, that's all I had for this video on further testing for elevated liver enzymes. If you do have specific questions on anything in this topic, drop it in the comment section. I may do a separate video on that. I'll definitely try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.